Pac-12 media right negotiations. Dude, like that, it's never been on track. It It's one of those things where like once you hear one thing, uh, 10 minutes to an hour later, it's something totally different. Or like if it's been on track, it's been this really crazy meandering, like where the hell are they going track that they didn't think they'd even be on. But the Big 12 jumped in front of them and forced them onto this track. Well, I mean, that, look, dude, that's business, right? Like, we see this all the time. And, and I think I don't feel bad for the Pac-12 the least bit. Like, I like the Pac-12. I like a lot of the programs out there. I love the location. I, I, I've always just been fond of it. I think it's a cool – everything they have, they have some great programs, great schools, great traditions. But at the same time, dude, like in this situation – you started all of the the negativity and all of the backlash you're getting because you started talking crap saying we're going to get bigger better than what the big 12 has like you started this fight dude like if you've never would have brought that up and then this whole alliance bs that bit you in the ass like, <laughs> I, yeah. to me that that's where like as this progresses i don't want to say it's I'm getting humor out of it, but I do not feel bad for anything that's they've brought upon themselves. Is that fair? I think it's fair. And maybe I'm forgetting stuff. I don't necessarily feel like the Pac-12 um, like picked a fight. Well, dude, like I, the, the way I'm looking at it, I'm not looking about even recent. I'm like, if you go back even a decade or longer when they were trying to poach Texas and all of that, like they literally stirred the hornet's nest over a decade ago and it's just finally slowly coming back and then now we're to a point where you've brought this upon yourself and you every time there seems to be an out like you do something to to like hick it up in your group you know what i'm saying like it's constantly self-sabotage yeah there's definitely some self-sabotage there and uh back to your other point like i will feel sorry for like the washington states and that's the oregon the, that's states that's the outlier yeah that's a th those two pretty much it that's it because everyone else, they're either very capable of getting a spot somewhere else when, and I feel like it's a when, uh, when the Pac-12 uh, shifts membership, let's say, the very nicest way. Um, but in more realistic terms, like Cal is literally gone, and part of my language here to start us off, but fucked themselves. It seems like Utah is really close to fucking themselves over. Utah's the weird like, one. Like, like I would say Utah's weird because while Cal has has done it from a like a an egotistical standpoint, Utah has come in and pressed all of the wrong buttons to annoy everybody, and I feel like they've they've kind of earned it in a sense from being a program who was shunned kind of like the TCU dynamic in the big 12 to where you go in and you're dominating that conference in football, which is where all this lays down. Like, I mean, it all goes back to football and the money that's brought in. So I feel like they've kind of like, they're up on this high horse waiting to get checked, but what you're seeing from the fan base and I, like, I've never noticed this or paid attention to it. Um, but now that BYU has come into the big 12, you're starting to see more of that hate and that just, the negative nonsense coming from that camp. And I could see why if you're like right now, if you're the big 12 and you're looking to bring schools in and you're looking at the camaraderie that you finally established, like, would you want to bring in a program who's going to constantly mess up that vibe? Like that's where I'd be a little apprehensive when I was looking at Utah. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I fully agree that you don't want to, you don't want to mess up the vibe there. There are reasons why I'd like to have them in. The Holy well, War at BYU, good, yeah. they're good. They're just good at football, but it there, there's some complication there, and it's really of their own making. But um, I kind of want to regroup here because when when I when I asked you like, hey, can we do another realignment segment? Mm -hmm. uh, it was more about kind of gathering some of the latest notes and intel right. that um, that Sigma365.com and the forums has. And while we won't give anything anything like really crazy away, because it's a premium forum. Yeah. It helps our bus the business that we both work for run. And the people giving the information in there have sources that they... It would very much mess things up for them and their sources, mm -hmm. uh, their livelihoods even. It's just um, business integrity. Uh, if, if any of that was revealed or went too public. Uh, because these are, not, these are not reporters. These are not people trying to make a living off this. These are people doing their jobs, living their lives that are connected and trying to share with the community. Um, but 
the the biggest the biggest stuff has just really seemed to be it, it feels pretty final espn as far as like the top tier i don't know if, if it's technically the tier one right but espn seems to be very close to out and as far as linear goes and it seems like the linear side of things is falling apart which is leading to this this push at least the information given in our forums that it could come very soon that a school probably arizona or colorado right starts the dominoes eight and there uh there was also a note that i think this is easy enough to share because it's more conjecture than inside information look for it to happen on probably like a tuesday wednesday possibly a thursday when those schools and the big 12 if they come to the big 12 feel like they can control the media the media cycle for 48 hours 24 hours of announcement 24 hours of reaction that's intriguing i, I think that I, I still they're in a weird situation because you've kind of you need to while there's no deadline there's no immediate deadline the longer it's drawn out the more antsy and the more outside pressure is building on these these administrators and because literally if you're an ad of one of these programs or um president anywhere you're going like your day-to-day -day basis you're spending probably 10 hours of it probably debating or talking about this and that's got to be nauseating um so if you're george klyavkov I, I think you really need to get this done quick and because right now, while you have, and, and I believe firmly that every team that's in the Pac-12 would like to stay put, but the more um, dominoes that continue to fall, the more less likely it is that you're going to be able to put something sustainable together, then yeah, you got to expect people to start looking elsewhere. And I think while it, it's probably the most, it's the worst time to be trying to negotiate anything. And while you already knew um, ESPN was kind of on the fence with this, and you knew that, you know, right, you have like the Big Ten where everything that they're taking hold of, now Pat McAfee show gets thrown in the mix. Yes, that, That's that was a big domino. That's ball out of nowhere. Uh, to So where, like, that's something that you're also going to have to, to, and I don't think they're going to win that battle. I think McAfee's going to get that money, and it's the weird dynamic. It makes so much sense for ESPN because he's already on college. He's becoming the face of college game day. Yeah. It, it just makes sense to consolidate that, have McAfee, his whole home, be on ESPN. And so when you go out and – because he's he'd be leaving a $120 million deal with FanDuel. Right. I doubt he's leaving for less money, which means there's less money for ESPN to spend on stuff like the Pac-12, stuff that would be their, what, fourth conference? Right, yeah. Well, the interesting thing about that is so Andrew Marshan has an article out in the New York Post right now about McAfee's deal, and he's saying that he might take less. He might take a $30 million plus cut to go. But the, the weird dynamic in this that, that I found intriguing was you're looking at a guy who has made his name in the streaming world, right? Like everything yeah. was on YouTube through fan, all of that. that he's on YouTube just like exactly. us. Exactly. And he's gotten to the point now where he's trying to flip and go linear Whereas the pack, like, it, I think it just shows this solidifies the strength of linear that I thought was kind of losing me personally, because I feel like I watch streaming. I stream more sports than I watch on TV. So that's where I kind of get the dynamic the Pac-12 is coming from with the streaming strong. Uh, but this kind of makes me pump the brakes a little bit. Plus, you start seeing all the numbers come down, these companies losing money. So this is another thing that the obstacle that's in their way, dude, and uh, you're going to have to act fast, man. Yeah, you have to act fast, and yet you said earlier, Klyovkov's got to find a way to extend that timeline. He's got to find a way to push, keep pushing it off because what they're getting right now, what they're going to get in this next like three months, if right. you want to put the window at that, is not going to be enough, right? Is that the way you see it? Because yeah. that's the way I see it, and he's already used that. Hey, next, like, wait another month, wait another month, wait. How many times has he already gotten that them to push off? these arbitrary they're, they're arbitrary but they're still deadlines no they are and then kept pushing and how many times can you do that before someone says enough i feel like i said that two weeks ago when we talked about this but like no absolutely i think that's what we're at right now i think you you have these people at, at these schools who have already been talked about that are you know kind of considering where 
they're starting to be like, you know what? I don't trust you. And if you lose trust in somebody, then what do you have? Like, and I feel like that's starting to be the point uh, where they're at with George Klyavkov. Well, he's yeah, more because so Colorado and Arizona than anybody. I feel like he's coming. He's coming to them with pieces of. Well, they said they would give us this much for this, and then they said they would give us this much for this. Except that's the like pa- package A and package B have similar elements where you can't sell them to both Disney and and Apple or or whatnot because there's overlap there in the content that they'd be taking. So really when when Disney or ESPN offers, you know, fifty million for this mm-hmm. and then Apple offers forty million for this, what it really what it really is is, oh, they both value this one thing at like twenty five million. Right. And both of them can't have the same thing. So you're not actually going to get 90 million. It's probably going to be closer to 70 million. I'm throwing around random numbers well, here this point, just to be clear. At this point, but, if you put something on the table and it was even close to like 30 million and a lot of that, like maybe if it was 30 million a, per school per yeah, year or 25 even at this point, dude, I think they'd be it. lucky to get 25. I would take it. If you're able to get 20 or 25, I would take it right now. But if I'm a school, to, but, but hold on. I would take it just to keep everybody together at this because 25, we're going to be I don't doing think 25 is going to keep it together. Even if you sell it, because all this is going to happen again in five years. Like that's the thing. I think like you got, and even you got to find a way to hold it together now to set yourself up for the future. And but the problem is that's where the Big Twelve is already ahead of you. So can you even catch up to that? That's the problem. Yeah, and it's really funny to see someone like Washington State's Kirk Schultz come out here and. I don't think he meant to sound like this, and so I'm not saying this as some huge indictment of him, but he really came out sounding like the victim. He, in an interview, he said, um, if you said when would be the worst time in the last six years to try and negotiate a media deal, probably the last five months is pretty close to the worst. It is. I don't it think is. there's anything wrong with that. Except for the fact that I don't think the last five months would have been the worst time to negotiate a media deal if the Big 12 hadn't already done one. I don't know, dude, because... I mean, if the well, if the Big Twelve was still waiting, and the Pac twelve was the first to the table, still in this time frame, yeah, I still yeah, think they the would Pac- be ahead. Exactly. So you you can sit there, and I I I really wish the best for Washington State because I don't think this is all going to go well for them. But like, you got to be careful when you say stuff like that because, like, you sound like the victim here when really you just weren't a proactive businessman or or business as yeah, a whole entity. His, from his standpoint. I feel like he's got more of a leg to stand on because his program is more of a victim of bad circumstances because they had poor leadership that literally, even before Klyovkov, like, I mean, I don't necessarily think that him at Washington State or Oregon State's president, like... Um, again, I'm not, like, trying to paint him no, because I don't. I don't think he was, he was trying to sound like the victim. I just think that he's not the only person... Um, the, the only leader in the Pac-12 who sees it like that... And some of those leaders are the ones who very much could either together or on their own could have made more proactive choices, fired Larry Scott earlier, brought in someone who would make sure the big 12 couldn't jump them in line. Like you can sit here and say, man, this is so tough. We need more time. Or you could have had someone who wouldn't have gotten themselves in the situation where this time was the worst time because part of it, of all these things aligning where our media deal is being negotiated at the worst time in the last six years could have been changed. Like what, another thing too is like, where the hell is San Diego state and SMU and all this? Because like, was that just something they threw out there? Like, okay, we're going to add the San Diego market. We're going to go grab the Dallas market. Were they just saying that like that you knew you lost LA? Were they trying to pitch that out there to see if ESPN was thinking, okay, you got a Dallas base, the San Diego base, maybe that makes up for somewhat of the LA just to see if that would help them get a better deal. And now that they've seen that and realize, okay, those programs really don't move the needle the way we expected. Like, has that just disappeared? Like, that's one thing it, that's confusing the hell out of me. I think it's a, there's this really weird difference between what has happened with the uh, the the Pac-12 and what happened with the Big 12. And I see that difference being that it seems like the Pac-12, after their losses, mm-hmm. was that much more initially stable. They're like, oh, okay. 
But as time got, has gone on, they've gotten mm-hmm. less and less stable. So then they've been like, oh, maybe we need to explore this ad. Maybe we need to explore that ad. Meanwhile, I think the Big Twelve is initially less stable. Yeah. As as much as it as much as everyone outwardly said, like, no, we're gonna stick together. Mm. It really did feel like as as being in the middle of it, like yeah. everyone was looking for a life raft. And so eventually they were like, Oh shoot, life rafts aren't coming. Yeah. The Pac twelve doesn't want to shop. The ACC's already pretty big and like deep into a long grant of rights. Mm. The Big Ten is standing pat. Yep. The SEC started this. They got who they wanted already. Like, no one was shopping. So then then it became, what do we have to do to solidify ourselves? They turned, it, it became clear they had to add. Yeah. They went from instability to, this is our route to stability. Meanwhile, the Pac-12 has been like, no, we're fine. No one's shopping. They felt stable. And they've realized, no, someone is shopping and then they'd be like wait how do we how do we avoid that and it's been this that this that it's just so crazy it, how it's it, just it seemed it it seems like it's so many similar steps that uh both conferences have gone through yeah. but they've gone through them in a different order almost the reverse in my mind that makes the two situations so different i, I don't know if you follow with all that but like no i do i'm just it's a it's weird comparison crazy how like that was thrown out there right like and then magically it just vanished. And I was just like, I, that's what made me wonder, like, because it seems like you put that out there, you realize like that was the bait, right? Like you were hoping somebody was going to jump on that and take that bait and it didn't work. And then you, it didn't make you do like some self-reflection of, well, damn, these schools aren't going to do it. What do we do now? Like it was just, it's just a weird dynamic that's kind of been lost in the shuffle that fascinates me. Yeah. You know what else fascinates me through all this? What's up? Yesterday on 365 Sports with uh, David Smoke, Craig Smoke, and Paul Catalina, uh, Mac Rhodes, the Baylor AD, was on. And you were producing this, so you, producing you heard that. all of it. But when Smokey asked him, "Have you like, can you tell us if the Big 12 in some regard has been in contact with Pac-12 Correct. schools? He didn't. And like we've met Mac Rhodes. We've both talked with him. He's a good dude, stand-up guy, pretty straight shooter. Mac is going to give it to you straight. <laughs> so when he does, when he didn't immediately say, no, I can tell you, like, we have not, I can tell you, like, your mark has not, he didn't, right. he didn't flat out deny. To me, and this is just me reading into it, just, like, having met the guy, having talked with him, having heard a lot of interviews, because they have him on damn near every week. Yeah. To me... That's as close to confirmation as you're getting as you're gonna get without him actually confirming it. And he cannot he could not, would not, will not confirm it. Yeah. So I think that's as close as you're gonna get. Like him not flat out saying no, I think that's that's a guarantee. I would book it. I would book it from a really good source. Book it. Book it. Book it. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. I no, told I, you the nasal thing. God, why are you making fun of me? <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. No, I mean, like, not for real. Like, Mac. Yeah. Uh, but you get what I'm saying with that? No, yeah. After, and absolutely. I think that's really intriguing. It is. I mean, it's. it's like, it we are you know, so deep into this that I, I just think that having that confirmation is a really interesting thing. I'm just to the point, dude, where, like, I just want to see it over and done with. Like, I, I hope everything stays pat. I hope that the Pac-12 stays in place. If it doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, it's college sports. Um, and schools have been changing conferences, and they've been changing who they play. They've been moving up and down for since the start, and it's nothing new. It's just now it's polarized because of social media, and it's taken on, like, a new life of its own. But this yeah, is, it, it, it just is what it is. It is what it is. But it also is what it is for the TV partners. Like, you got you got to look at like, hey, for CBS, does uh, this many football games and the cost it it gets to secure those rights and yeah. make sure they're produced and and everything goes smoothly? Is that cost higher or lower? And does it bring in more viewers that they can sell ad space to? Um, does it bring in more or less than like making sure you've got three hours of scripted television right. ready to go like i find it hard to say like at maybe it costs i don't know five million dollars an hour <laughs> bro i don't even know. I, I don't i don't know <laughs> that, that's just a random number yeah. that popped in my head but like 
do you do you think it's more likely that football costs five million dollars an hour and brings in more viewers or scripted television costs five million five million or less dollars an hour and brings in more views like it's the cost of views and i just because not every network has to think about that yeah but networks like cbs do so you're taking out players left and right for this and that and all of a sudden it just seems like no one really wants to say yeah we are the home of the Pac-12. You can get a little bit of them here, a little bit mm -hmm. of them. We're the home. It doesn't seem like anyone wants to say that. Anyone wants to pay for that. It, it, you're split, like it, you're going to split up the brand if they stick together. And so if no one will buy all the Pac-12 inventory, then a bunch of companies are going to be fighting over what they get while trying not to overpay for what they get. And that's just going to hurt the Pac-12 brand. No one's going to help them build it. They're going to have to build it themselves. And they're going to have to build it in all these different areas that get probably different pockets of viewers. It just doesn't seem like... I know I say this every time we end up talking about it. The numbers just don't add up.